<laughs> anyway, oh. we're nah. We're going to talk about uh, Final Cut 10 right now and uh, and show you again what it can do. So please welcome from Edit Dog, Steve Cantor. Thank you, Michael. Uh, as always, it's a pleasure to be here at Lapsy Pug. Uh, so let me just start off real briefly uh, by telling you how I come to this enterprise uh, we're all involved in right now, uh, which is that I've been um, a, a multi-platform editor uh, almost since I started editing it professionally. I did start on Avid, uh, but uh, Final Cut 1 came out very, very soon after I started working professionally. And more or less ever since that time, I've been uh, fighting, uh, sometimes losing, uh, eventually more and more winning battle to try to get people to take it seriously. And we finally got to a point, I think, with Final Cut 7, where it, it, uh, it wasn't an uphill battle anymore to convince people that Final Cut 7 was a serious uh, editing tool that should be taken seriously. I, I did not imagine uh, that Apple would forget that, but, uh, you know... What, what happened is my, my initial impressions of Final Cut 7 were like everyone else's. I was just absolutely shocked by what I was seeing. It did seem like iMovie Pro. It looked like iMovie. A lot of stuff, uh, the, the, the terms were right out of iMovie. And uh, I had uh, committed to doing a webinar uh, for a guy uh, who does uh, filmmakingwebinars.com. Uh, he wanted to get some, some trainers and some people to do some Final Cut 10 webinars right after it was announced at the, the NAB Lassie Pug meeting. And I just said, okay, I'll take uh, converting your Final Cut 7 projects to Final Cut 10. And knowing full well that we'd find out the day of release whether or not I had to instantly cancel that webinar or come up with some sort of workaround. And, uh, you know, I found out right away there is no workaround. It's not going to happen. But I have to do something. So I came up with the idea of doing Final Cut 7 for Final Cut Pro editors. And uh, it was a, a pretty successful webinar. And what I found while I was getting ready for it is that uh, Final Cut 10 is actually not as bad as I feared. There are a number of very, very pro features in it, uh, hidden amongst some other things that are very obviously uh, not ready for prime time for a lot of us. But uh, what I'm going to do tonight is share a lot of that uh, with you. Um, the, the person I did the webinar for is uh, giving away two free uh, webinars tonight. And I did want to just really briefly mention that um, also on the site, I'm selling basically this $5, I think it might be five fifty actually, but it's a little conversion matrix uh, of converting all your terminology because really a lot of the differences between Final Cut 7 and 10 aren't real. They are semantics. They are just term changes. They are some keyboard shortcut changes. But there's a lot of things that people wrote about that are missing that are actually there. And you can basically use this PDF document. There's one you can print to. It's hyperlinked so I can say, hey, I want to find out about trimming. And I can go to the trimming pages and see. Thank you. Uh, you know, oh, the ripple tool. If I want to do what I normally do with the ripple tool, I'll use this arrow tool, uh, the selection tool in Final Cut 10. Uh, and if I want to do what's normally done with the selection tool in Final Cut 7, I'm going to use this position tool in Final Cut uh, 10. So it basically goes through uh, on, a, on a sort of topical basis what you need to do, and you can go link to the table of contents um, to go, you know, navigate around where you want to find. So again, you might want to check out filmmakingwebinars.com uh, uh, to check this out. But basically this was uh, hopefully a, a helpful tip for uh, people who want to just get working in Final Cut 10 as quickly as possible. And uh, you don't have to maybe learn as much as you think. Uh, so let's just get right into it. First of all, the good news. Final Cut 7 still works. So uh, as you saw in the Stump the Gurus, uh, there is a way of running both of them even on the same system. I will, again, stress, Apple does not recommend that you put Final Cut 7 and Final Cut 10 on the same system. But if you do, they have a recommended path for doing so, and it does work, all right? Uh, number two, the good news. If you have an existing, uh, let's just use the Final Cut term, uh, the Final Cut 10 term, library of existing media that you've built up because of your Final Cut 7 projects, and you've got capture scratch locations, maybe you've archived some of your media someplace else, Final Cut 7 can actually share all of that 
without duplicating media. And I'm going to show you how to do that tonight. So they can share the same media. Conversely, if you start working with Final Cut 10 projects, and of course Final Cut 10, as I will show you, has its own sort of special way of dealing with media and projects, Final Cut 7 can share all the media in those locations. So they actually do share media, all right? Um, another kind of good news is that um, both of them work in Lion. Uh, that's what I'm gonna be demonstrating tonight with Final Cut 10, uh, but I've been kind of, you know, wanting to explode for the last couple months because I'm in the Apple developer program and I, and I installed Final Cut 7 on Lion quite a while ago. Uh, and it's, you know, seems about as stable on Lion as, as it is on Snow Leopard. So um, that's one of the reasons I was so shocked that they announced end of life for Final Cut 7. I was convinced, hey, if it works in Lion, there must be plans for it, all right? Uh, and another a bit of good news to maybe uh, look at, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Apple remote desktop application to really quickly, sorry about all my alarms there, uh, look here in my server. I've got a Mac Mini server running OS X Lion here, and I'm gonna go to the Applications folder and the Utilities folder, and I'm gonna type the letter X. Let's go a little bit under there. There we go. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but XAN is built, oh, that's not promising. Uh, that icon's not showing up. XAN is built into Lion, and it's built into Lion server. XAN admin is just sitting there in my, in my opinion, probably waiting for Apple to turn it on. So I think what you're gonna see in what I've come to learn about Final Cut 10 is that there is a foundation there that points to the future. And it seems very logical to me to assume that Apple has not abandoned all of us. It seems very logical to assume because of some of the features that are in there that they are planning to slowly maybe deliberately, but surely bring it back up to speed, just like they did with Final Cut 1. When I started on Avid and I started with Final Cut 1, Final Cut 1 did not have audio meters. It's very easy to mock Final Cut 1. It had no audio meters. Who doesn't need those? All right, so now people are complaining, oh, there's no multi-stream, multi-cam editing. Well, okay, but there's audio meters, so as far as I'm concerned, this second, wa this second wave, they're way ahead of the game already, okay? All right, so let's, uh, let's actually get into some stuff here. Uh, I'm gonna start going through uh, as much as possible, and um, can you give me like a 15 minute warning, if you would? I don't know, at some point. I meant to start my, uh, my timer here, if you'll just give me a second so I can time myself. Okay, I will try to be funny. Um, okay, clock, timer, stopwatch, reset, okay. All right, so uh, the new implementation in, in Final Cut 10 um, is very exciting to me. And, and what I mean by that is that if I look at uh, one of the media drives I'm using right now, as we went over in um, Stump the Gurus, there's now a Final Cut Events and a Final Cut Projects folder. These are created by Final Cut. Final Cut manages these folders and these locations using some kind of database methodology. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Is there another application out there that manages its media through a database? Anyone? Avid, all right? Now, having spent years doing Final Cut Pro for Avid editors classes, and of course now developing <coughs> the reverse flow right now, uh, Avid for Final Cut editors, um, I've heard this complaint for a long, long time. Final Cut is terrible at media management. You know what? Final Cut 10 is pretty interestingly good at media management. It's just, it's so different from the old paradigm that people think that it uh, sucks. And I'm, hopefully I'll show you that it, it does not. Um, so the app manages these locations. Now by default, because Apple has to assume, you know, or can only assume you have one drive, uh, it does save or want to save uh, things here in your movies folder. And there's a Final Cut events folder there because playing around a little bit today and there used to be a Final Cut Projects folder, and I just went in there and deleted them and set someplace else for my projects and my media, all right? The, the rule is this. Uh, your events, meaning your media, think Capture Scratch folder, and your projects can live on any direct attached storage. As of right now, they cannot live on network attached storage or on a SAN. 
However, as you will soon see, the media itself can actually be on network attached storage or on a SAN. It's just that the event folder has to be on direct attached storage. So the event itself, this folder, can act as a media folder and it can also just act as a database referencing the media someplace else, just in the same way that a Final Cut Pro project used to reference where all the clips were. And I didn't hear people complaining, hey, your Final Cut clips don't you know, live on an external hard drive. They're in this project file on your, on your boot drive. Well, that wasn't a problem because it was only metadata. It was only referencing the media someplace else. That has not changed, all right? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go into Final Cut Pro right now. And uh, you know, I set this up kind of from scratch because a lot of people are gonna be doing that. If I wanna create a new event for media, I can create the event first. All right. Now by default, like I said, it's going to want to go maybe to the movies folder, but it's very simple. I just select the location where I want to put it and then choose new event and you can see it's going to go on my G drive there. Uh, and we have some simplistic little icons for importing files or importing from camera that people can mock. Hey, it's so much like iMovie. All right, but import from camera is pretty powerful. All right, most importantly, you can actually import yourself. Hi, self. All right. But I can click open archive, and now I can navigate uh, to uh, places where there are, uh, you know, cards. Uh, what Avid calls a virtual volume, what you might have called just the folder you copied off the P2 or the XD cam card, uh, Final Cut calls an archive. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to a place where I have some tapeless media, and gosh, it's disconcerting to see that right now. So I'm gonna look someplace else, and I have a little P2 card. Uh, volume here, and I'm going to click open. And then I'm going to click on the volume, and there's the media. All right, and I can skim through it right away. Skimming is actually a very cool feature if you're asking what's cool or what's pro about uh, Final Cut 10. Uh, yeah, I'm doing this with my finger or I'm doing this with my mouse, but it's, it's a great way to scrub, and we just call it skimming. Uh, I can just go ahead and select all of this stuff and click import all and then I'm presented with some options. Do I want to add it to an existing event or create a new event? All right, and I'll just call this new event, you know, laugh, see, pug, because I'm never creative enough on the fly to come up with anything better. Now, do I want to create proxy media? Proxy media is going to be the lowest resolution media that Final Cut 10 can generate, which is ProRes Proxy. Uh, if you set your preferences ahead of time, you could also choose to create optimized media. That would be in standard ProRes 422, all right? Uh, or I could just bring this stuff in right away. I'm gonna go ahead and create proxy media, actually, because it's pretty fast. It's gonna happen in the background. And for right now, I'm gonna skip some of these options. I think, you know, last uh, time, uh, Michael went through a lot of these things, and, and there's other ways to get that information. I just wanna bring it in right away. And then I'm gonna close this window. And even before it's done importing, here in what's known as the event browser, I can start looking at this stuff right away. Now while it's importing, I'm actually playing this stuff off the archive or off the card. I can even start marking this stuff and editing it. All right, now I need a project to, to edit it in. So again, I'll target whatever drive I feel like. And there's even a create project button down there on the bottom. Again, I'll call this laugh, see, pug you know, P2, say. And again, it's on the drive that I want it to be on. And now I'm gonna hit a keyboard shortcut and start putting it into my sequence. Now Final Cut is calling the sequence a project, but it is just a name. If I wanna go to what's known as my project library, and again, making sure that I've selected the correct drive, if you will, create a new folder, all right, I can call that folder my project folder. Obviously, I wouldn't call it generic project folder. And then I can put my sequence inside of it. And then just like I do normally, I can create new sequences uh, or, again, what Final Cut calls a project. Okay, second project inside that project folder. Or I can even duplicate existing projects just like you duplicate sequences to lock them in place. I'm gonna make this my version one, now I'm gonna continue to edit and call that version two, and if I need to go back to version one, I can do so. 